now coming to a practical example again uh, ICICI bank use case same I we did not write map reduce for them I did not write actually but I, I saw their uh, uh, one of the batch jobs they were running so there they were using map reduce so they had multiple branches right so they were collecting the transaction data from each branch okay so they will probably have a Bangalore a branch they have a Bangalore branch in the Bangalore branch it's very high number of transactions right so in a month let's say 1 million transactions will happen just example okay because Bangalore uh, branch is very very uh, heavy okay they also had a Hubli branch in Hubli in a month probably 10,000 transactions will happen because Hubli is not as big as Bangalore actually and then they have a Chennai branch right in Chennai again it's a 2 million probably there are a lot of customers here okay and they had a Goa branch Goa had let's say 100,000 so this transaction data will be stored already and the transaction data will have multiple items like customer number what amount he transacted so they want to figure out branch wise total same example so the branch will become the key each transaction will become the value so if I'm collecting all the data from Bangalore branch there will be a branch code that will become the key and each transaction the amount will become the value for that so for Bangalore you will get 1 million key value pair for Hubli you will get 10,000 key value pair again Chennai 2 million go what 100,000 like that so many will be there so this is called a skewness in data data skewness data skewness means somewhere you are having more data somewhere you are having less data now the problem is imagine you had only four branches I define two reducer one reducer here one reducer here hmm? and I told okay automatically you distribute the key value chances are there this will go here this will go here this will go here this will go here you see the problem because by default in MapReduce it will try to evenly distribute the data there is no guarantee right so in the ICICI bank case if I do like this my first reducer will take a lot of time to complete because it has to add 3 million values second reducer will be very fast because only 100,000 values that is where you will write a custom partitioner you can write some it's a class in Java custom partitioner where you can say once the shuffling is done which key you should give to which reducer you can manually mention so you have control on the distribution otherwise it will automatically shuffle and some reducer will pick it up and will be slow also sometimes yeah the hash partition will try but there is no guarantee that's what so it is better to write on your own so production use cases we never use hash partitioner because you can't get a guarantee and also once you write a map reduce program it's very difficult to again modify your see uh, we are learning now in the real world it is different right if a program is already running nobody will allow you to modify it you have to stop the process then write a new program and nobody will allow you to do that so when writing itself you optimize it so that there is no problem later spark also relies on the similar idea but the difference in spark is here one thing is that after the mapper read the data it will push this to hard disk spark doesn't do that spark keeps everything in memory ram so it can do this whole thing in one shot give you the final result so spark is 10 to 100 times faster than MapReduce it's proven that it is 100 times more faster in many cases point number one point number two is that in MapReduce originally Hadoop is written in Java so a lot of people started writing MapReduce in Java and I'll show you the code uh, to be very fair it is very difficult to write it's not very easy to write a java program in map it is too complicated actually if you write it right so the learning curve is very high if you go to spark people prefer either uh, scala or python you can learn scala in a day today you can learn tomorrow you can start writing spark programs easily you have a way of programming which is very concise and short not like java so writing a python program it will take one by tenth of a time so map reduce also supports python another thing right support is added but still uh, comparing with uh, you know spark it is much faster anyway you are, you are taking transaction data how does transaction data look like you will have customer number customer do you need all all of that for this no right i need only the branch code and how much amount key and value 
well you can have composite key and all but don't discuss right now but normally you have a key and a value so from 27 column you need only two columns 27 column data is 10 terabyte two column data will be one terabyte so usually it can accommodate on one machine that's what i'm saying usually most of the cases theoretically it runs on multiple if possible but we have never come across a situation because even these boxes these data nodes we are handling are also very uh, high capacity hard disk right so it will be at least 60 terabyte plus very rare that you get 60 terabyte uh, like we had a use case where there were 2 billion values 2 billion values is 2 terabyte that's easily accommodatable right in most of 2 billion values we had that was a use case we got around 2 terabyte of uh, uh, data uh, total required for doing the shopping so it can do any sort of operation which can be uh, represented in the key value uh, format so the only uh, rule here is that whatever data you want to process okay it has to be represented in the form of a key and value for example you can use it for image processing okay i will show you an example of that and there is another flight delay analysis i will show you so rather than telling i'll show you examples of where it is actually used you know different that you have to write the logic in the mapper yeah exactly because you will have the original data from the original data you will get key and value key and value you have to process because that is why you are extracting so if you don't want to process something you have to remove that in the mapper side the mapper output will be processed anyway or in the reducer i can say probably write a logic if the key is this don't process it it will not process but that is useless right because anyway it will come through shuffle and everything if i'm not processing in reducer also it doesn't make any sense text formatting cleaning everything has to happen in the mapper phase like so if i have a unstructured line of data okay i want only this as a key this as a value i can write a logic for that other things i can avoid so the custom partition is actually a code in your map reduce program if you are a java developer you can write a java program in that or python or any language but the difference is that if you are writing a java program this is for java developers you have to compile it to produce a class file then you'll package it as a jar file and then you will submit it to mentioning your public class you say run if it is a python program there is no compilation it will be a .py file you will have something called hadoop streaming utility you will tell hadoop that it's a python code not a java code so hadoop will give you a jar which will run this as mapper and reducer because python you don't get a jar out of it so .py file right doesn't compile as such if there is an intermediate result and if that node has crashed it has to rerun because it is not persisted anywhere and very interesting point the intermediate result is persisted in local file system not in hadoop if it was in hadoop you will get a replica are you getting my point it is in linux it is persisted so if that machine crashes it's gone right so it will again has to run a, that mapper on another replica block and get the output there is no other way to get it right it can be configured when you are installing hadoop uh, there is something called map reduce scratch directory where you have to mention in each machine you have to create a folder and say that this is where I am going to store my output. And when the shuffle starts, once mapper is running and the shuffle phase starts, this data is automatically loaded into the RAM. Each machine will load the data. Actually, this data does not need to know because why you are persisting is so that if, uh, you know, um, some machine crashes, right, you can still recover the data. That is why you are persisting. So if the shuffle and sort starts, okay, this data will be loaded into the RAM. It does not have to read from the hard disk. That data from scratch directory will be pushed to the RAM. We will start reading from there. Storing to the hard disk is persisting. RAM is non-persistent, meaning if your machine restarts, whatever is there in the RAM will be gone. Right? Hard disk is persistent storage. If you store in hard disk, even if I restart my box, it will be there. So, otherwise, if it doesn't persist, what is going to happen? If you want to again, if let's say the reducer was running, okay, this machine crashed, right? If you're not persisting here, probably this is in the RAM, it can lose. Again, you have to start from here, all the phases, right? So, in, like in the middle stage, you are just temporarily, you are storing the output, that is persistence. Now, there is a format actually in the RAM. It's not like the data will be directly loaded. All this data has a specific format, so you can identify what it is, and the process can read from there. No, no, shuffle and sort data is normally, uh, yeah, once this is done, this is also persistent. So, all these are Java processes. So, it happens step by step. Once the mapper process is done, Okay, it could have persisted the data, right? The next process kicks in is shuffle and sort. Shuffle and sort process will start and it will request for data. So, this is a, a distributed framework, like it will, and it could have known that mapper ran here, here, here. So, it needs data from here, here, here. 
So whatever this temporary data you persist, it will be loaded into the RAM. So data will be available as key value pairs in all these RAM. It will read it. All this will have something called association index. It will tell which data belongs to which key, which value. Then only you can understand, right, where is the data. These are all happening as part of one framework. You don't have to bother at all because all you need to bother is mapper code should be written properly. This part will happen, will be handled by the framework. So there is a Java class, Java object, which handles all this, right? This Java object gets acknowledgement for every read and write that you're doing. And it has something called an associative array where it store the index of each key and value you're persisting and where is the location, which folder it is there. So once this process is over, this Java object will look at this array. It will understand you have 1 million to go to the shuffle phase. And these are the locations where it is. And automatically the machines will load the data because it is a continuous process. It will match and give it to the second phase. And that will process from there. Also, fine tuning MapReduce is very, very difficult. Because internals of MapReduce is not really easy to learn and tweak when you're writing the code, right? Basic code writing is very simple. You can write and run the code. That's not a big deal. But internally writing the code and tweaking this will take a lot of Java knowledge. That, so one of the reasons I feel MapReduce became obsolete is that it's very difficult to learn and practice in day-to-day -day life. Right. So even if you're a Java developer, if you have to write a MapReduce code, you can't write it in a day. 